All right, welcome everyone to our first coffee session of the new year. Happy new year to everybody on here. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it is January 10th of 2023. Uh, and before I get started, I just wanted to say, I know a lot of folks are uh, experiencing quite a weather pattern in California. So, um, you know, hopefully you are staying safe uh, in the storms and the rain and the wind and all the things. Um, so uh, hopefully you're staying safe and just uh, to put it out there, if your school or district is, um, you know, facing any kind of uh, cancellations or anything that's complicating your testing world, feel free to reach out to us. Let us know if there's anything that we can do to help. You can reach out to your success agent. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe there's something that we can do, but I uh, just hope everyone out there is staying safe. Um, so we'll we'll get to it. Um, today, we are, um, as usual, sponsored by the California Department of Education. Um, my name is Tyler, and I work for the training and outreach team here at ETS. And so we've got some folks from ETS here, as well as folks from CDE that are going to be uh, going through a couple of topics um, that we've prepared uh, and then answering everybody's questions related to the CASP and the LPAC. Um, so as usual, we'll um, direct you to uh, download today's materials if you'd like to, the uh, training, the slides and the resource guide, a document with all the links and a bunch of stuff that we're going to talk about today are available on our website. You can navigate to um, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Cal Outreach. That will bring up our Linktree uh, page that's got several links on it. And one of those is our upcoming training opportunities page where you can go to today's coffee session and find the materials to download. Um, hopefully one of my colleagues might be able to put the direct link in there. Uh, there you go, uh, into the chat. Um, so you can also uh, get to it that way. And like I said, all the all the information you should need should be in there. Uh, our agenda for today, we're going to talk about um, a few upcoming training opportunities and available training opportunities. Uh, let's see, we can go to the next slide. Thank you so much. We've got a few just kind of updates and reminders about testing season since it's almost here, it's coming up, um, maybe already is here for a few folks. Uh, we have a little bit of an update about the crisis alert response system or CARS that is in TOMS. Uh, we've got a little bit of info on our new print on demand process, and then we'll get to everybody's questions and provide some answers. And as usual, if you have questions, uh, the chat should be, um, not available to you, um, but we will be using that to put in some links. Uh, but you can put your questions into the Zoom Q&A function. Uh, if you uh, have that bar, that control bar in Zoom, there should be a Q&A button where you can go in and uh, put your questions in there. All right, so a few training opportunities that we want to mention to everybody. Uh, so first of all, we have uh, as usual, past trainings available on our past trainings opportunities page. Um, a lot of our trainings are recorded and posted there along with materials and anything else you might need. If you missed it, you can go back or even if you were there and you want to review uh, some of the materials or some of that information, you can go to the past training opportunities page and either watch the recording or look through the materials, whatever is most helpful to you. So the pre-test virtual training series uh, has several past sessions on there. Um, then there's going to be a couple upcoming as well. And we also um, have the using accessibility resources in daily instruction uh, training that is available. It's an asynchronous training. There were a few uh, sort of synchronous help sessions uh, involved in that training, but all of the content is available asynchronously to uh, go through at any time. So I really highly recommend um, the uh, the accessibility training 
uh, there. There's a lot of really good content and a lot of folks looking to learn more about accessibility resources. There's a whole bunch of other trainings on there as well. Um, so go and check that out. We have a few upcoming live trainings as well. So like I mentioned, pretest has a session, let's see, this week uh, on Thursday, on January 12th, um, that is going to be focused on what's new for testing for CASP. So a lot of really good information there um, as far as things that have changed recently or anything that's kind of new and important. Uh, and then on February 9th, there will be an administering and monitoring testing session of pretest. So make sure if you're not already to sign up for those sessions. We have the data-driven decision-making training series as well uh, that uh, SCOE puts on for us, the Sacramento County Office of Education. We've got a few sessions on January 17th, one on January 18th, and one on the 24th. Um, so you can find all of these on our upcoming training opportunities page. Same one where you got the uh, materials for today. This is also, um, it's also linked in your resource guide. We have the uh, latest Tools for Teachers Shared Practices webinar uh, that's coming up on February 21st. It's called Supporting Student Success with Interim Assessments and Tools for Teachers. Those are always really great. Get to hear from other teachers and educators at different districts uh, using those tools. And then we also have new coordinator webinars that SCOE also um, uh, puts on. And those are very, very helpful, especially for folks who are new to their role as a coordinator. Um, those can take place either in person or sometimes uh, online. Uh, so make sure to go to the um, upcoming training opportunities page to check all that out. All right, um, so we can move on to some updates and reminders. First of all, the CASP summative assessments are now available um, in the um, in the testing system. Um, so depending on uh, your testing window, it might vary a little bit, but the all of the CASP assessments, including the Smarter Balanced for English Language Arts and Literacy or ELA and math um, are available. Uh, the California Science Test or CAST, the California Alternate Assessments or the CAAs for ELA and math, and the California Spanish Assessment or CSA um, are open. Um, for most of those, you have a unique testing window. I think CSA has a set testing window, um, but uh, those are possibly open for, for many of you um, or going to come up at some point. So those are available now. All right, our next update and reminder is about the CASP test administrator tutorial. Um, I'm not sure, Tina, if you'd like to take this one. Yeah, sure. The CASP test administrator tutorial is launching on January 12th. So that's this Thursday. All LEA CASP coordinators will get an email on Thursday with more information on how to access the TA tutorial. Um, but similar to last year, it will be available in Moodle again. And so we'll give you instructions on how to get your um, enrollment keys. We'll provide you your access codes in the email as well um, and some more information. New this year, though, is um, getting having a public site for the CASA uh, test administrator tutorial. So a lot of you gave us really great feedback on the tutorial um, last year. And so we decided to give um, you an option to get to have the content available publicly so you wouldn't have to go into Moodle. So um, that email on Thursday will cover some of that information as well. The tutorial, if you're not familiar with it, will cover the administration information and procedures for the CASP assessments, um, such as the Smarter Balanced for ELA and Mathematics, the California Science Test, um, and the California Spanish Assessment. And also note notable is a new video that we created based on your feedback as well, which is the how to administer from start to finish. And so we were able to go into a classroom and um, have a practice live test session with some students. So we recorded that and um, that video will be available in the TA tutorial as well. So look for that email this Thursday. Thank you, Tina. Yeah, really, 
recommend uh, ditto about the video um, that you all made. I think that's um, a really helpful addition right at the top of that, that training. Yeah, and then one thing I forgot to mention is that the TA tutorial is optional. So LEA, LEAs, LEA CAS coordinators can decide if you want your test administrators to take this tutorial or not, or you can um, create your own training. But as long as your TAs are adequately trained before testing starts, um, we wanted to create the tutorial to make it a little bit easier on you training wise though. Thanks, Tina. All right, and Maggie, do you want to handle um, talking a little bit about the summative LPAC and summative alternate LPAC? Sure. So the summative LPAC and the summative alternate LPAC are both coming soon. Those will be available to administer starting February 1st. And um, the DFAs for both assessments are available in TOMS. And there's also a PFA for the summative alternate LPAC. It should be in TOMS and it's also on the summative alternate LPAC test administration webpage. So that should help you in preparing for administering the summative alternate LPAC. You do wanna make sure that if you do have students taking these assessments that you make sure to notify parents and guardians if you haven't already and make sure that all of your staff have completed the necessary training if they'll be involved in administering either of these assessments. And I can also touch on second scoring for alternate LPAC, summative alternate LPAC and CAA. So if you do have students who are assigned for second scoring for either of the alternate assessments, that will be indicated in the second scoring assignments uh, web pages for both of the assessments. And I'll put the links in the chat for those. Um, and just make sure to ensure that eligible students are in TOMS prior to administering either of these assessments. Um, and use the second scoring lookup tools to determine whether your school is actually selected to second score for either of them. And again, I will put the link in the chat in the chat and uh, just some information is included in the PFAs for both of the assessments. Thank you, Maggie. All right, and then um, we've got just a few uh, remaining kind of tips and things that we just like to go over. I think several of these are pulled straight from our um, coordinator checklists uh, that we have on our website. Um, those are great resources that uh, hopefully you've heard of, um, but just a few things that are, I think, relevant um, right now. So first of all, a uh, reminder to evaluate student demographic data from TOMS to verify grade level, special education status, English learner status, home language, date first entered into US schools, all of that can be very important to kind of um, double check. Uh, we also want to remind site coordinators of their site testing window um, and their roles and responsibilities, providing sample test administration schedules. So really making sure to keep that communication line to uh, your site coordinators uh, about what their responsibilities are um, is really important right now. Uh, a couple more, uh, we, um, you should be providing site coordinators with a preliminary list of students um, for testing, test assignments, and student test settings, um, also known as um, uh, accessibility resources, so making sure all of that is communicated to site uh, coordinators. You want to make sure that you're collaborating with technology personnel to make sure that devices and systems are ready for testing. Um, you don't want to run into tech issues right, right before all of a sudden you have a bunch of students to, to test. Um, a few other things, notifying parents and guardians about uh, upcoming summative LPAC and summative alternate LPAC testing and also confirming site level LPAC trainings um, and uh, confirming that the site LPAC coordinators have conducted the required site trainings for test examiners and proctors for the summative LPAC and the summative alternate LPAC. Any um, reminders or uh, kind of other general notes from anyone on the team or folks at CDE that you'd like to, to mention before we move on to our last couple updates?
All right. Well, let's move on. We'll see if any questions come up in the Q&A. Um, the last couple things we wanted to mention today. Um, so the first thing is about CARS or the Crisis Alert Response System. Uh, so there was an email sent about this yesterday afternoon, um, letting everybody know that the so we, and we showed this off a little bit last month um, during the coffee session. Uh, basically, this system is the new uh, way to handle uh, alert responses for any students or student responses or anything that happened that they put into a test that LEAs should know about. Um, they were kind of formally called alert papers. Uh, and this new system in Tom's is going to handle all of this. And the screens are available now in Tom's, but the system is not uh, currently online and functioning quite yet. So we are still, for the time being, uh, sending alerts to primary coordinators, uh, either CASP or LPAC, depending on what the um, what test the student response was in, as well as superintendents. Um, so we're sending emails, uh, just like we have always done. Uh, for now, you may, in TOMS, you'll see a widget for CARS and a uh, page on the navigation bar for CARS, but those will be empty. Uh, until we turn on that functionality. Um, so there was just a little bit of a delay to make 100% certain that that system is fully, fully functional. We don't want there to be any kind of errors when it comes to situations like this. Um, so we just wanted to let folks know that um, you might see that in Tom's, but it's not quite up and operational yet. Um, and you'll get kind of full uh, details on how it works um, before it does get turned on. We'll send emails to um, all coordinators and to superintendents about how CARS works. Uh, we do have at least a couple things, I think, on the next slide um, about it. Uh, so notifications for crisis alert responses will eventually be located in that CARS screen in TOMS. Like I said, superintendents and all LEA coordinators will receive those automated email notifications once it's um, up and running. And then a reminder will be sent every three hours during work hours until a rep from the LEA logs on and acknowledges the alert. Um, so we mentioned a lot of this last month as well. And uh, like I said, full information will be out there when it is um, when it is launched, before it is launched. So, um, but yeah, just uh, wanted to make it clear that it's not quite fully functional yet. All right, and the last thing that was also included in that same email from yesterday afternoon was the new print on demand process. So previously to uh, turn on this accessibility resource, uh, you had to contact your success agent um, to request it, and there was certain information that we needed. Um, well, to make that process a little bit more clear uh, and standardized, uh, there is now a an Excel template that you can download. There's a link to it in that email um, that you can save. But there's also a link to it in Tom's, right where uh, right next to where you would assign it in the test settings screen for a student. Um, there's a link in there. Uh, that will download an Excel file. You go that file has all the instructions that you need. Um, you enter your student information into the other tab of that file and email it to uh, a specific email address that now I don't have in front of me. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I, I can pull it up. Um, Bob, do you know it off the top of your head? Or, or anybody else remember that email address? What email address are you looking for? For the print on demand. Um, oh, CA feedback. At ets.org. I think that's right. ets.org. Yeah. Um, and there's no hyphen or anything else like that. It's all just one word. CA feedback at ets.org. Um, Thank you, Bob. The chat, can you just throw that into the chat? Yeah, perfect. There you go. And this is in that email as well. Um, and it's in the, the document itself. Um, but so you're going to fill out that, that Excel template and email it to that email address in order to request and turn on um, print on demand for any students that may need it.
All right. I think that is all for our updates. Um, so I, we can launch into some questions. Does anybody have a burning one that you want to um, get to right away? Right. I marked one here um, that I can answer. Uh, so someone asked, what is the turnaround time for interim assessment scores? And also, is there a way to drill down into these scores to see item analysis, scores by item type, standard claim, et cetera? Um, so interim assessments, uh, the turnaround is about 20 minutes um, unless there is hand scoring to be done. So if there are items in the interim assessment that was taken that need to be hand scored, it can take about 20 minutes to go into the hand scoring system. Once those are scored, it'll take about another 20 minutes to get into SIRS. Um, and then, and that can vary a little bit, but generally that's uh, a decent um, timeline for that. And then once in SIRS, there are ways to kind of drill down into the scores. You can see for interims, you can see individual items uh, and how students answered them. Uh, there's uh, some uh, claim information, but actually in SIRS this year, there's no claim information because of, let's see, for interim assessments. Now I'm getting mixed up here. <laughs> for interim assessments, I think there is actually um, some of that data in SIRS. You can find out a little bit more in our SIRS user guide, which I will pop into the chat and respond to that question with as well. Any other questions that folks want to cover? Um, there's a lot of questions about when the DFAs for LPAC are available. And so those are available now in TOMS. So if you log into TOMS, you'll go to the resources section, and then you can look for the summative LPAC DFAs or the summative alternate LPAC DFAs. Those are both available there. And the preparing for administration documents are also available there too. And quite a few people asked about the test administrator tutorial. It is optional and it will be available this week on Thursday. So you will get an email with all the information about how to access it, whether in Moodle or publicly. So please stay tuned for that. I'll just answer a quick one. Sorry, Bob. No, that's okay. Um, this is Chad Courtney, and there's a question about, we had a couple of teachers tell parents that students only had to get 70% of the answers correct on CASP to get a three. I don't feel comfortable with their information, so I was wondering how accurate this is. Is this something we should be telling people? So <clears throat> the way the scoring works, particularly on the smarter balance, which is, I assume is, is probably what you're referring to, um, you know, it's not the quantity of questions that students get correct so much as it is the difficulty of the questions they get correct that dictate their score. So I can't give you an exact number, like if you got 70% of items correct at this particular difficulty level, but I would say that what you're saying here, that 70% of the answer is correct is not necessarily accurate. It's, it's more dependent on the difficulty of the items. If the student is continuously answering questions incorrectly, then the algorithm is going to give them easier questions. So 70% of easier questions versus 70% of harder questions may result in a different score. Feel free to email me if you'd like more information. Um, Tyler, I got three things I'm going to just throw out here uh, based on some of the questions. Uh, I saw a couple about the security affidavits and agreements and such and users. Um, if you already gave your teachers one role, say in CASP as a test administrator, and now you're adding them as an LPAC test examiner, they will have to go into TOMS and they will have to sign a second affidavit. Uh, they will get an email when you've given them a new role, they'll have that email, but you can always run the report um, through the report section in TOMS, the, oh, somebody help me out with the name of it, uh, Remote Administration and Test Security um, report, it shows you who has signed and who has not signed. 
I will warn you that if you have a person who has a cast test administrator role and then you add an LPAC and they do not sign the affidavit, they will not see the assessments. So when you have a teacher call up and say, I can't see any assessments outside of the interim assessments, that's the first thing you should check is to see if they have signed all their affidavits. If they have not, please have them go into TOMS, not the test administration, but TOMS itself and sign their security affidavits. Um, there's some questions about SERS integration. And uh, I just wanna mention the SERS integration right now, it's really with the uh, student information system. So um, I know ARIES has been working very hard. The last time I checked with them, um, they were still working on some beta testing on it. I will check with them and if they finally have it up and running, we will update our websites. But um, if if you want to have yeah. this SERS integration, so your student information to SERS integration, please check with your student information system and see if they've already have it set up. If they don't, they can reach out to us, they can reach out to the CDE and uh, we'll get them the information. It's on our websites as to what they need to but in reality, it's it's up to the student information systems uh, companies to to do that setup. And then the last one is people are asking about audits, uh, block one audits. So the August to November were completed. The block two audits start now, and they go through the end of March. Um, if you are part of block two, you'll be getting notified by the auditors sometime very shortly to set up an appointment for them to come see you. Um, again, if you go on to our websites and download the test, um, the security questionnaire, you will have everything that the auditor is coming in to ask you. So you'll be more than prepared. It's one of the easiest audits you'll ever have in your life. We're not the IRS. Um, we're not out there to ding you. We're just checking to make sure that everything is handled properly. If you're blocked too, you should hear something this month or next month as far as setting up an appointment. Um, and if you're blocked three, you won't hear anything until the end of March. And those are the three that I had, Tyler. Um, Chad, there is a question about the dashboard. I don't know if you can help with that one. Um, is it the one about the LP? Yeah. I defer to Tracy if she wants to answer <laughs> that. Otherwise, we'd have to give you to accountability, I think. Yeah, I would go to the accountability, but um, there isn't new levels. So the LP made a decision to take the four levels um, when they worked on the accountability, and they have divided level two and level three into two so that they can demonstrate growth from level one uh, to level two, level two lower to level two upper, level three lower, level three upper, and then to level four. So. Uh, those have been set by the LP um, for a while, so there isn't anything new that I know of, but definitely refer to the dashboard and the requirements for LP, and if you do have any uh, specific questions, um, definitely reach out to them at dashboard at cde.ca.gov. Thank you, everyone. Um, I am actually going to take a second to because I'm I'm kind of browsing through a lot of the questions here, um, and I see several folks who are uh, new to their role or asking you know questions sort of about the location of different resources that we've mentioned. Um, and you know, first of all, you know, I want to just say. Good for you. Um, you're going to be all right. <laughs> there's there's probably a lot of information that you're taking in right now, and so um, you know I know sometimes we are are saying a lot of things like everybody knows where they are or whatever. So um, I, I thought it might be helpful just to kind of show uh, our um, website really briefly and just a couple of of um, major resources and um, things that might be helpful to some folks. Um, and I think we've got the time to do it. So I'm just, uh, while other folks are kind of looking at some of the questions, I'm going to take over the screen here. All right. 
So I just wanted to start at casp.org um, for, uh, for a few things. So first of all, um, you can always, uh, especially if you are the, um, the LEA coordinator, you can always reach out to Caltech or your success agent and the easiest way um, to do that. So there's information in uh, this box that is titled help for LEA cast coordinators. Um, it's got the phone line and a link to um, our help page that has the get answers tool, which is a quick way to kind of search for some things if you can't find your answer there. Um, Again, the phone number is here for Caltech, which is our kind of phone line um, for, the, for that kind of help. And your success agent uh, can really sort of help you a little bit more with more complex issues, right? Or, or something that needs follow up, you might want to contact your, your success agent and you can find them by putting in your county or district or LEA or school name in this search field. Um, and get um, get your info for your success agent and email them. Um, so that's a really great way to to get some help as well. So I just wanted to to point that out. That's a you know especially if it's a, an urgent matter and you need to get you just need someone to help you find something. Um, you can do that. Uh, but a lot of our other information can be found, or you know, systems and other things can be found on this page. I saw someone asking about the SIRS guide um, and uh, more information about SIRS, which I mentioned, the California Educator Reporting System. And you can select the button on the front page for SIRS to get to a landing page that has the link directly to the system, but also information about integration. It's got the link for the user guide, um, as well as a couple videos that are very helpful. This understanding the California Educator Reporting System video is helpful. Not that I'm biased, but I did create that one and narrate it, um, but I think it's pretty helpful. Uh, <laughs> a lot of good information there. Uh, the checklist was the other thing. I saw a couple of folks asking for the checklists. Um, and so on, and a lot of this goes for our LPAC website as well. I can show it um, after this really briefly, but a lot of the things are in the same spots for LPAC. But if you go to the test administration tab in the navigation bar and select manuals and instructions, this is a really helpful page. Uh, and it's got a bunch of manuals at the top and then a, uh, several checklists as well. Um, so the LEA CAST coordinator checklist and so on. I'll just show LPAC as well really quickly here. It's got a very similar navigation bar, test administration, drop down, manuals and instructions, uh, manuals, checklists, all here. And you'll notice the buttons are just uh, down the side, um, the, the left side of the page instead of across as well for a lot of similar resources that you need. Also, oh, trainings, that's the last thing I'll just mention. The training tab in the navigation bar has, uh, for LPAC, you've got all of your administration and scoring trainings, um, upcoming trainings and past training opportunities, which I've mentioned several times, as well as Moodle, um, uh, Moodle information as well. So uh, these are these are some places to start if you're new, if you're if you're not sure where to go. Uh, the checklists and the our support pages I think are really uh, very very key um, for you um, as you're starting out. Anything that's come up that I should show before I stop sharing? All right. All right. Um, going to look through a few more questions here. I'm not sure there's one in here about second scoring that I'm not sure if I can answer. Um, will there be filters to show completion rate by subgroup? I'm not sure. So if that is referring to the completion status system, um, that should be something that you can filter by 
in the in completion status. Uh, you should have all of the subgroups available in there. Um, I'm not sure if that is referring to a different system or anything else. So if you want to clarify that, let us know. Let's see. I see one about how do we know if we were selected for an audit? I know you were talking about that, Bob. Um, um, quite honestly, if they were selected for an audit, they have already been notified and we've already gotten responses back from all LEAs with the uh, contacts at the schools themselves. So if I'm not harassing you, then, <laughs> then you're good to go. Uh, Tyler, I know I said I was going to sit back today, but I'm going to put my coordinator hat on. And you've already mentioned this, but... Uh, it, it can't be mentioned enough, especially because we, I saw so many people writing, I'm a new coordinator, I'm a new coordinator. Um, well, the CAS window has opened. Some LEAs will start testing this month. Many of you will not start testing uh, for a couple of more months. Uh, you, your windows were all set and um, most of them happen mid-March through mid-May. So that's great. Um, February 1st, the LPAC opens up for everybody, and you can start doing the summative LPAC. Uh, quite honestly, for the students who are at the science levels, if you have alternate assessments for science for your fifth, eighth, or your students in high school, those assessments should have already started. Um, those assessments, quite honestly, I, I love the way those are set up. They're set up to be done throughout the school year. The teachers can go into the planning guide for the alternate assessments for science. They can see what topics they are talking about and fit them into the curriculum. If you have teachers who have not done a single of the four parts to the alternate for science, now is the time to start talking to your teachers, get them going. The, the whole purpose of that is so that you're not cramming the science assessment into a week or a couple of weeks, that it is spread out because of the students that it's designed for, it makes it a much easier um, and doable assessment for the students who have, are assigned to that. So please, uh, for the students who are supposed to take the alternate assessment for science, please, uh, if they have not started, go ahead and get those started. That also makes me remind you that uh, you should be working with your special education office because if a student is assigned for an alternate assessment, any alternate assessment, as soon as they open it up, they are locked into alternate assessments across the board. IEPs need to be made, you need to make sure that they're up to date, that it actually marks that they're going to take the alternate assessment across the board. And if not, get those legal documents up to date so that nobody has to worry about it later. This is the time to be looking at that. Work with your director of special education and have them reach out to the teachers and say, please review your IEPs. You, you don't have to have addendums or anything right now. Just go through and review your IEPs. If somebody is supposed to be taking um, alternate assessments and you only have it marked for science and not for ELA math, then get those meetings done so that you're above board and everything's working properly. This is also the time before we get into it. I know Tyler's already mentioned this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go after it again. Get your teachers uploaded now. If you have not uploaded your users, now is the time to get them up, get them starting so that they're signing their security affidavits and, uh, and then pull those reports and look to who has signed and who hasn't. That was one of the biggest call drivers we had last year was our teachers can't see the assessments. They have roles, they didn't get in. Why can't they see the assessments? And that security affidavit is the one that stops so many people from being able to get in. So please take a look, get your users going, get them signing so that it's not a problem down the road. And then the last one I'm gonna push right now um, is, is your test settings. You know, this is the time to be working with your, with your uh, sites and all that and getting the test settings, get your files set up for the test settings so that you can upload your test settings and have your students ready. Well, the test settings have gotten much better and, and, and we are now much quicker at getting them processed and into the test delivery system. If you can get it done now and then tell your sites, okay, we've uploaded everything. If anything changes between now and testing, 
do that onesie twosie on your own and get them updated if there's an IEP or something. And the reason I didn't say just talk to your special education department is because test settings include designated supports, which we all know can be utilized by students who are not special ed. So are there designated supports that some students might get it, um, be able to use and help them as they're taking the assessments? And I know new coordinators are gonna say, well, how do I know if a kid needs that? You know what? Those interim assessments are wonderful tools to provide teachers a good understanding of where their students are. The little FIABs will show them where the students are with certain standards. Are the students understanding the standards for their grade levels? Um, are they needing a little bit more work? And at the same time, while you're still getting that great information from the interims, you're getting the chance to try out tools, designated supports with your students. And then you'll find out, you know, does this work for the student? And will it help them when it comes time so that they can concentrate on the material of the assessment and not how to take the assessment? I'll get off my soapbox. Thanks, Bob. No, I think that's really helpful. I, I really um, find it helpful uh, to reiterate the interims a lot because that uh, so many people have mentioned that as really helpful just in the classroom to if you run a few interims, it's really like a trial run. You find out a lot <laughs> about what you might run into um, before getting into the summatives. Tyler, I also want to highlight really quickly, um, since we were talking about new coordinators, I don't know if you highlighted this when you were going through your preview, but we do also have some helpful spaces for new coordinators. So if you look on our upcoming training opportunities pages, there are some new coordinator training. So specifically to give information to folks who are not, haven't been in their positions for too long or need certain refreshers. So there are some coming up. So if you just check our website, which we will link again, you may be able to find one that you can attend, especially now getting ready for testing. Oh yeah, thanks Tyler, you can go ahead and show it. So yeah, I figured I'd, I might as well bring it up again. Um, so training tab from the navigation bar. Um, there's always upcoming trainings, but I'm going to go to past training opportunities and materials. Um, there are some pretty handy uh, filters here. Um, so you can just go by month um, and look for, so here's a new CAS coordinator training, new LPAC coordinator training and expand. Um, so there's some info there, but I'm also gonna just check. There's a new coordinators filter here where you can find pretest. Um, and a lot of the new coordinator trainings by month. Um, there's uh, this one I think might be really helpful for a lot of folks. Um, the uh, pretest session that was get to know Tom's. Um, so this is something that you can go to uh, and watch and uh, download materials for, but a lot of these new coordinator trainings have note-taking guides. Some of these were in person, so there are no recordings available, but if you keep looking, um, so this one, new coordinator webinar from October has a video you can watch. Um, yeah, and then if we go to upcoming trainings, we'll see we've got pretest coming up. There is a, let's see when this, before I say, see there was one yesterday, but also, okay, so this is different locations, have different uh, dates as well for some new coordinator trainings in person. Uh, so you can look through, yeah, both of these pages for some opportunities. Um, again, you can filter for new. And yeah, those are, are very helpful, as Maggie said, to can also just really help to know that there are other folks in, <laughs> in that situation, right, that are learning everything. Um, so yeah, that, that can be really important. Um, while I have my screen shared, I might as well, I didn't go into Tom's at all, um, but just to, I saw a couple people ask about the reports that Bob mentioned specifically for the security affidavits. Um, so I'll, I can show that. Um, so there is a button for Tom's. You might also just have it bookmarked, but um, right on the homepage of casp.org or lpac.org. Um, uh, let's see. So you'll be able to choose your role after you log in. 
um, you will see a lot of uh, information on the front page of Tom's, um, but we are going to, and there's quite a few things here, but we're going to look at reports. And uh, there's a couple, there's uh, LEA level, uh, site level. Um, so if you go under LEA, we can find the, let's see. So there's ones about SSRs, about test settings, test assignments. We are going to find the uh, this one, security forms and remote administration status report. Um, and then you just select request. Um, and that'll pop up um, for you to download. Um, so that's the one that Bob mentioned that can be really helpful to kind of check who has actually gone in and logged on and signed those security affidavits so that they can actually put on the tests. A lot of, um, I saw a couple folks ask about um, student test settings and things. So you, you'll probably be in the students menu. You can search individually or upload a file. You'll also find contextual help in here um, and templates as well um, that have info. Um, so yeah, Tom's can be a little bit overwhelming if you're new as well. So I just thought I'd show Tyler, that briefly. That page, Sorry? Stay on that page, please. Okay. Um, somebody asked about designated sports and who assigns designated sports to students who don't have IEPs. Um, designated supports are tools that can be uh, assigned to any student who is taking the assessments. Uh, typically what is asked is that the educational team uh, comes together and makes a decision based on that. And the team can be, uh, if the child's say in middle school, maybe it's talking to all of the teachers or um, you could even include the parents in that and such. And then the site coordinator and LEA coordinators, just like signing test settings to a student who's part of special ed, you can go into Tom's and uh, thank you. And you can assign a designated support. Um, it, there's no concern, you, you, you can't assign something to a general education student where it's an accommodation that they need to have special ed. Tom's is set up that unless um, the special ed field is marked as a Y, it locks out anything that a student can't have. So you don't have to worry about it. If, if you have a student who's not part of special education, um, so if Tyler scrolls down, we'll look at the special education field here and you can see that it is marked as no. So now if he goes to the top of that screen, clicks on test settings, um, anything that he can have access to will be open for you. Uh, if it's grayed out, it means it's an accommodation it's that you need to be part of special ed in order to have those. So once he comes down here, you see the designated sports, they're all open and they are accessible so that you can assign them to students. And somebody uh, is asking the difference between test examiners and test administrators. Uh, within the CASP, so within the math, ELA, and the science side of the house, the difference between a test administrator and a test examiner is that a test administrator uh, administers the general assessments, the normal assessments for all students, and a test examiner uh, can give the alternate assessments. So uh, you have to be a test examiner in order to be able to give the alternate assessments for ELA, math, and science. On the LPAC side of the house, a test examiner is any person giving either the summative LPAC, the initial LPAC, or the initial alternate LPAC, or the summative alternate LPAC. So the only difference between a test administrator and a test examiner is on the CASP side of the house, because uh, for the alternate assessments, um, it, it, uh, unlike the general assessments, which can be given by any staff member, the alternate assessments have to be given by a credentialed teacher. So that's why there's a variation in those roles. And on that, Bob, to um, test examiners for the CAAs on the CASP, CASP side do have to complete a test examiner tutorial. And that's housed in Moodle. And we can share some information on that. Um, but we do have a whole, thank you, Tyler, you're so on it, or Tina, for sharing. Uh, we do have a whole page dedicated to this information. So if you are a test examiner, 
for the CAAs before you can administer the CAA for science or the CAAs for ELA or math, you do need to complete the test examiner tutorial. So yes, and, thank and you. And while we're on this question, you guys, Tyler, if you would do me a favor, if you would pull up the Get Answers page, I just wanna give a little plug for our Get Answers page. And if you would type in difference between TA and TE, And then scroll down. So if you guys want this in writing, there's a whole description on what needs what and that explanation here. That's a quick way to find it if you're getting that question from others. Thanks, Christine. So, and I do want to reemphasize what Bob mentioned earlier with if you are administering the CAAs, now that the ELA and MAP is available, some folks may go and try to administer everything from now. Please do make sure for the CAA for science, you are giving that throughout the year after you've taught instruction on whatever the PT is. So all that information is included in the tutorial. So please make sure you take it before you start administering. I have two quick ones I want to answer. Mm -hmm. We have time. Um, <clears throat> one question that I've seen more than once is, will there be a way to show completion status by student group? And there is no filter in either the uh, completion management system that's available through the links tab in TOMS, nor in the um, completion status reports in TOMS that allows you to look at it by student group. Filters are mainly about, you know, whether a student has or has not completed, what the dates of their completion is, things like that. So there is no filter. And I assume this is the question probably for dashboard, possibly dashboard purposes. Um, but yeah, the answer is no. The other question is, if I remember correctly, last year there was a talk about making speech to text available in the secure browser. We use Chromebooks exclusively for testing. This is called embedded speech to text. And we actually brought this in last year because we were very aware that over 80% of the state <clears throat> is using Chromebooks in which you cannot use non embedded speech to text. So uh, you can see an example of that in the practice test, it's also in the interim tests. So that feature is available. That's embedded speech to text. Does not require permissive mode, which doesn't work on Chromebooks and does not require external software. It's all embedded in the test delivery system. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Chad. Um, yeah, and I'll point out, uh, you had that answer about text to speech. So if you have any questions about accessibility resources, um, a good place to go uh, is so on CASP and LPEC websites under the resources tab, there is accessibility resources, which takes you to this page. And one of the first links on both of those pages is the matrix, the California Assessment Accessibility Resources Matrix, um, which takes you to uh, a page on CDE's website. And you can download this Word document that has a lot of information about that. And yeah, if you look for um, speech to text on there, there is an embedded version and a non-embedded version, like you mentioned. And I will do a very quick little plug um, on this page in a couple spots, you'll see demonstration videos, accessibility resource demonstration videos. And there's one for speech to text in here. Um, let's see, oh, there it is, embedded speech to text. And that'll take you to a demonstration video of what that actually looks like in the testing system. Oh, and we're getting ads, of course. Um. <laughs> Trying to jump forward here just to show you, but uh, I do, I see another question as well about word prediction systems that work with CASP. Um, there, uh, there isn't uh, uh, an actual resource for word prediction, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think if it was an accommodation, that could maybe be something that is requested as an unlisted resource, um, and it would need, you would need to use permissive 
mode, I believe. But Chad, do you have? Yeah, I mean, where prediction is currently an accommodation for ELA math and science, okay. but it is, as you're correct, it's not embedded, meaning right. they would have to have their own. And we've had some inquiries about this, about specifically about a, a piece of software called CoWriter um, that contains word prediction. One of the issues that we're having is that CoWriter does multiple word prediction, not just one word prediction. So we've been in conversations with them and with Smarter Balanced about embedded word prediction, but we're, it's not ready to be brought into the system yet. Tyler, since you're in a, a mood for demonstrating, <laughs> can you show people where the non-POMS form is for this year, please? Yes. <laughs> Here, test security, I believe, under the test administration tab. Correct. Right here, non Tom's users. So, yeah, this um, is for anyone who is uh, not actually or doesn't require an account in Tom's. You don't need to make you know them a, a role in Tom's, but still might have access to the tests. They can you can print these out and keep these on file. Um, have these sign and keep these on file. All right, well, we are getting close to the end here. Any um, uh, Oh, I do see, does CoWriter work with Chromebooks? So I don't believe so, Chad, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, I think the issue with Chromebooks is that you can't, uh, when they are managed by the district or the school, you can't run um, permissive mode on them. Basically, you can't, when you run the secure browser, it sort of takes over the whole thing um, and you can't run any third party programs. So I don't think it would work with Chromebooks, right? That's correct. Okay. So yeah, it would have to be a Windows machine or um, uh, potentially a Mac, I think. But all right. I see one well, more question about what to tell special ed advocates about word prediction. As I said, it is available as an accommodation but it has to be something that the student's already using that they already have their own non-embedded software for. And I understand the barrier of running it on a Chromebook, which has existed for a while because permissive mode is not available. And we've had this question from people before about things like speech to text. That unfortunately, the only solution we have right now is to run it on a non-Chromebook for that student. Yeah. But, and, you know, if it is an accommodation though, and it's in the IEP and it's approved, there's no penalty for that. There's no, it's not like having it as an accommodation, um, you know, or, or anything like that is a bad thing. It's just something to set up. But if, yeah, um, with all, you know, designated supports and accommodations, students should be used to um, using those in their regular um classroom activity right so that it's not a brand new thing that they're using for the first time on the tests like chad mentioned so all right we are running out of time so to respect everybody's time and let you get... Tyler, can you give us one second yeah. maggie's going to throw up a quick poll i believe with a yes no question it's very simple okay sounds good Maggie, are we good? Okay, so one Maggie's second. About to, Maggie's about to throw up a really quick yes no poll. Um, for those who are not aware of it, we've held in the past uh, work days where we've uh, opened up a Zoom meeting all day long and people could come in and ask questions and get help with things like uploading, um, looking for reports, things like that. And we're just curious if anybody uh, would like us to run another one of those. And then what we'll do is we'll find the best day possible. So um, Maggie, we good? I think so, let's see. Go ahead and turn it on. So the question is yes or no, would a work day be helpful for you um, in the next few weeks or sometime within this month? 
go ahead and just say yes um, or no, and we'll take it. Uh, so the, we do not have a date set up. Somebody just asked, when is the date? Uh, we're going to base it on whether or not everybody uh, feels like it would be a, a great thing for us to have. Yeah, it looks like it looks like that's favorable. Folks enjoy those. Um, you know, I've been in before helping out um, during those those sessions. It's great to have people just drop in and get something solved. Hopefully, usually for the most part. Um, so we'll, I'm sure we'll be communicating about that. Um, and yeah, like I like I was saying, you know, we'll we'll let you all go. We know a lot of folks coming back from vacation uh, or break have a lot to do. So. Um, good luck again. Hope everyone is staying safe um, with the with the weather. Um, and we will have another coffee session uh, in about a month, um, February 14th. So that's the second Tuesday of February. We'll have another coffee session for you all. Um, and in the meantime, if you need any help, of course, you can always reach out to your success agent uh, and Caltech and we wish everybody good luck. Stay safe. Just remember, there's no better way to spend Valentine's Day than with us. Ah, yes. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good rest of your week.